Hello there. Hello there. I'm coming today with a really difficult topic. This one is about privacy. And I was talking yesterday with my friend about smartphones and what good the smartphones bring to our lives. I mean, what quality of life improvements did they bring, right? So we made some list and basically both of us had uh, the same list and I'm going to read it to you. I want you to think about what I'm reading and think about what smartphones mean to you in terms of quality of life uh, improvements, right? Calls and messages, of course, this one is um, pretty obvious, right? I mean, when I was younger, we had a culture uh, without smartphones, of course, because they didn't exist at the time. And basically, we would have home phones, we would uh, call our friends and have a deal like, okay, let's meet at 8 uh, on the city square or something like that. And, you know, if you're late uh, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, it's it's usually okay. If you're late a little bit more uh, than that, then nobody knows where you are, why you're late. And basically, you're not okay to behave like that towards your friends, right? And nowadays, we just have phones and, hey, yo, man, I'm, I'm late, I'm not showing up or whatever. I mean, life has turned around pretty drastically due to the sh- sheer possibility of uh, speaking, communicating with people uh, like that, right? For, with, with the smartphones, right? Uh, and messages, of course, uh, go under the same umbrella, right? Maps and navigation. This one is one of my uh, top favorites uh, of the smartphone era. I mean, when I was uh, younger, my uh, father used to drive us to seaside or whatever vacation, and he had a huge paper map in his car. And basically, if he would be going to a new city where we haven't been before, uh, my parents would stop at the uh, crossroads, they would... open up the huge map and like okay we are near this city and we have turn left right okay we we should turn left um i i have this vague memory of how that worked before and nowadays i just turn on my navigation tell it where i want to go and it navigates me and it navigates me in a way that i completely disconnect my brain from navigation if i can put it that way i also believe that it's making me a little bit more stupid because i don't really think about where i'm going i mean you can give me this navigation tool on my smartphone and it will take me to the destination no doubt Uh, but if you send me to the same place uh, a couple of months later without the navigation i'm not even sure that i would uh, remember which roads did i drive so I want you to think about that as well. Okay, this is a little bit less about phones, but not really. Uh, Fitness trackers. Ever since uh, the first Fitbit, uh, I think that was the first one that I had. Uh, I think this was a really good motivation for all of us who have a sedentary lifestyle. I work in IT, so my life turns out to be um, sitting for the most of the day or, or or even more and this is really bad so all of us IT guys need some motivation to to start moving and now that we're getting somewhat somewhat older uh, we're having this these new um, fitness devices that are also also doing um, heart rate monitoring and not just that but also ECG uh, we, which helps me with, with some other problems that I have. So I'm re- I really appreciate these kind of devices. Uh, all those, de- these are actually proprietary and uh, completely non-free, but that's another topic for another day because, um, you know, when it comes to health and uh, choosing between your health and having free software, it's a bit of, um, you know what I'm saying here. Search engines. So this is like uh, my friend said, it's it's a little encyclopedia in your pocket, right? Wherever you are, you have all the knowledge of the world. Like you only need a couple of seconds to search something on the internet and you will have the answer to whatever you need to know at the time. I think this is really huge 
and uh, it's it's a really big quality of life improvement. Cameras. So one of my uh, childhood friends he used to tell me that the best camera uh, is that the one that you have with yourself. So if you own a DSLR camera from Canon or something else of that uh, level of quality, of course it will make a better photo than the most smartphones will do, right? But if you don't have it with yourself uh, at the moment when you need it, uh, it's as good as you don't have it at all, right? So um, cameras in today's smartphones are incredibly good and uh, I think that's awesome. Okay, this one might not be so essential, but hear me out. Banking applications. So, of course, that we can use banking applications on our computers for paying the bills and everything like that. But when you're out and about, uh, sometimes you need to have your money transferred to someone. Uh, you need to transfer your own money from one account to another. And being able to do, to do that on the go uh, from the uh, comfort of your pocket computer, I think that's really good and practical. So if you are like me and living with uh, digital money, I think uh, th this is one of the things that smartphones have done good for us. Uh, also notes. Uh, I do a lot of notes uh, usually on my smartphone because when I have an idea, I need to write it down immediately, right? So if I want to write it in my paper notebook, I will have to remember it until I get home. Uh, but if I type it in my phone, it's a uh, guarantee that it's going to be written down so I can maybe copy it to my notebook later when I get home. Okay, so why did I read this list to you? I wanted you to think about what is your list. What, what is it that phones do uh, for you that really that you really can't live without and I'm not talking about uh, your addictions like social media and stuff like that I'm talking about what did smartphones really bring truly useful to, to your life right and I'm asking what is the possibility of switching away from propri proprietary uh, operating systems on the phones from switching away from non-free software that's uh, available to you from Google or Apple or anything li like that. So I have downloaded EOS uh, on my phone here and I'm testing it. I have been testing it for a couple of months now. And if you take a look at my list, you will see that pretty much everything can be done with a completely free operating system. But of course, people are, I'm going to be blunt with you, people are addicted to their smartphones. We are addicted to all kinds of things. Uh, maybe you are not addicted to Facebook, but many other people are. Maybe you are not addicted to Twitter, but many others are. Maybe you are not addicted to Instagram. Of course, many others are. So it's a question of what do you really need uh, on your phone and how much are you willing to give up uh, to start using a completely free operating system, be it EOS or, or maybe something made in Finland. Uh, it depends on you. But as I said, this is a really difficult topic for me because I too am addicted to a lot of stuff in my phone. And I have been trying to move back a lot of my pocket computing back to my laptop, to my desktop PC and get rid of the smartphone as much as possible and use it when I really need it, right? Please let me down in the comments what is your list. I want to read about it. Thank you for watching.